Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. And in today's video, you join me leaving a multi-story car park. It's possibly one of the most bizarre intros I've ever done on the channel. But um, we are going on our first, sort of first drive since I'd um, fitted the new shock absorber. Now let's just traverse this because this is possibly the narrowest multi-story car park ramp in existence and um, this is quite a long car so it's quite difficult it wasn't exactly built for five meter volvos but um we're out i think so yeah we like i said i've had the shock absorber done the last final iteration um fitted the 468 pounds shock absorber after you um what multi-story car park would be complete without like a flashing light Oh, there's a speed bump. All right, there we go. Let's get out of here. It's far too tight. Oh, there we go. So, um, yeah, let's see how it is. I mean, we've just gone over a speed bump there. This car is, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. It's totally different when the shock absorbers are working. Make sure he wasn't going to step out in front of me. Um, and also, I haven't really done a night video from this perspective as well, so I thought I'd do that. Um, just driving back sort of from work um we might come across mrs dl as well on the same road because she's been working um she'll be coming along the same road that we're going to take to go home so we might come across her in the jeep um but uh, yeah first impressions of this shock absorber totally transformed the car it's lovely um, before we had sort of little vibrations coming all the way through the car over basic tiny little bumps but actually this now i suppose this is what the s80 was designed to drive like wasn't it it's much much better um and yeah especially on my daily commute i'm seriously going to notice the difference because there were certain places where i have to be swerving all over the road to avoid potholes because it was quite intolerable i'll uh i'll do a video explaining how i fitted it shortly i was it's saturday night tonight and i really haven't got a video to go out so i thought i'd film one on my way home but um yeah it wasn't it wasn't too bad a job it was one of those jobs though i had some friends doing it um didn't want to really put them on camera they're not really into the whole youtube thing um so i didn't bother filming it but it, it was three bolts i did tell them it would only take 10 minutes um and it took an hour and a half and i was nearly late for work but um that's that's how we do these things isn't it and i've still got filthy hands but um yeah so it's not a difficult part to fit at all it's more difficult to try and track this part down um obviously i went to a dealer a last one in the uk at 468 pounds the last one on the other side i paid for um from a different dealer i paid 558 so keith price volvo in have a give any if you didn't see the video really really did me a favor there um so big thanks to those guys but um yeah having fitted it i can honestly say 500 quid is worth it <laughs> it's absolutely unreal um didn't even need any specialist tools really uh we had just some some sort of hand socket wrenches um nothing nothing major and um, there's a 21 mil bolt on the bottom of the shock and then two 10 mil bolts which seemed to me a little small um but they obviously are doing the job because cars managed 12 years and with those 12 those are uh, 10 mil tiny little bolts holding the top mounting for the shock so um yeah i mean they're all sealed units and everything so it is quite difficult to uh you can't repair them or anything i'm sure there'll be some some old man in a shed in sweden that can repair them but um yeah no, no one that i could find so yeah it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a faff because this this shock absorber a lot of you guys won't have this issue i mean this car is fantastic in so many ways but i seem to have picked a car that is very niche in the fact that it was a little experiment that volvo did with these shock absorbers um that was only lasted sort of 18 months uh didn't last at all as a result you can't get these parts anywhere there's no aftermarket support for these parts so it's only direct from volvo or from 
a crashed S80. Uh, it does not even use the V70. Um, and obviously that's an absolute faff, um, but it it just makes everything more expensive as well in that regard. Um, I mean, Volvo wanted the last place. I didn't ask key price because I was able to do it myself last time. Um, but Volvo, the other Volvo dealer whose name I won't mention, wanted an extra 300 odd quid just to fit the thing. Um, which, if you had all the kit, I'm going to get some lights, mate. Um, if you had all the kit, you could probably do it in 10 minutes. I haven't got a an impact driver, so I didn't didn't just whip it off. Whereas if I had, that was all all the time was spent trying to get the bolts off. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really really easy job to do, and hopefully, touch wood. I haven't got any wood on this on the inside of this car. If I did, I'd be touching it. Um, touch wood, it will last um, another sort of nearly 100,000 miles that was lasted. I mean, it hasn't lasted that long because it failed and I've been driving on it, but um, it lasted quite well. Um, but no, apart from that, I think now the S80, we've only got one other thing. Um, and shortly after I filmed the headlight adjustment video, now I didn't admit this, but um, I managed to break the headlight, as you can see, the right hand beam pattern is much lower than it should be and what I did is I was trying to force the um, the headlights to adjust down more because they, they, they're out of sync basically um, and what it was is because this one was broken on the left hand side I've already had to re-glue that back um, and now I know I now know why that one was broken because I did it to that one very easily I tried to just push the um, basically the housing for where the bulbs go that is, that's adjustable and that gives you the adjustable lights. I tried to push it down and managed to snap off where the motor connects to it. So um, that's why that's drooping down. And if it wasn't for that, um, the car would be pretty much perfect. Apart from we have had the returning issue of the windscreen washers not working. They're blocked up again with the, the horrible jelly uh, that you get from using cheap washer fluid so i'm gonna have to probably hopefully well hopefully not um i'm gonna try and just clear out the, the jets um on the bonnet here but i might have to completely remove uh the system or give it a full flush uh which is just annoying because i did it not long ago i thought i got a lot of it out but clearly hadn't got enough of it out so uh, that i'm gonna do i mean i'll show you We've got, you might even, I don't know if you'd even be able to see it on the camera, but there's a tiny little drizzle, nothing. And it's really annoying going from something that worked perfectly, and then it was just one day I was using them, and then the jet just stopped, and uh, that was it. But, uh, yeah, a bit of a faff. But this car now is driving so much better with the um, shock absorber done. Um, the, only, the only reason I didn't get it done sooner was the price, but um, really, it's not that... The difference it makes is amazing. It's amazing how you, um, how quickly you become used to something, isn't it? But um, yeah, we're coming out of the town now, or the city, as it were. Uh, use the high beam. You can see where that headlight is pointing at the ground, uh, especially with the main beam. And you can also hear, see how disgusting my uh, I'll make sure I don't blind the cyclist here. How disgusting my windscreen is at the moment because of the fact I can't really wash it. So I'm gonna have to. Get the, do it the old fashioned way with a cloth and uh, some um, window cleaner or a bit of uh, aero wash wax uh, definitely does a good job as well especially in this summer constantly cleaning the windscreen without if you don't have decent washer jets but even if you do actually they, they're getting quite bad just some massive bugs um, around this time of year and driving I always tend to drive <laughs> I was saying to uh, Mrs DL the other night um, we only ever seem to come home at midnight because um, we both sort of worked weird long hours. Um, we only ever come home at midnight, which is <laughs> a bit of an interesting. Uh, I don't know what neighbours must think, um, but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's all it's all going well. I'm well happy with the car. I mean, we're, we're on ninety nine and a half thousand miles nearly, uh, so ninety nine thousand five hundred miles. I reckon we'll probably hit a hundred thousand uh, next week, um, easily really, uh, which will be good. 
Uh, let's just look at what we're getting on the fuel economy at the moment. 41.1, I've been driving a bit of a, a bit impatiently recently, just because of everything I've had to do, I've been in a bit of a rush for, so I've had to make up a bit ground. But um, yeah, it's not, it's not doing too badly at all, really, the uh, MPG. Took it up to Chester yesterday. It's gone very quickly, I thought it feels like longer I can go, actually. Um, yeah, took it up to Chester yesterday. Uh, which was about two, well, just over 220 miles uh, to go and pick up a roof rack for the Jeep. Uh, that's actually still in the boot because I didn't have time to um, get it out. But it's a it's a Cargo Master roof rack which goes on the outside of the Jeep. Uh, it's going to be for a rooftop tent. Looks really cool. Went to a fantastic place called uh, SMC up in Chester. And uh, for those of you that don't, haven't heard of them, because uh, I hadn't, they. They've started a company called Black Mountain Jeeps, um, and they've started it with Richard Rawlings and Dennis Collins of Gas Bunker Garage. And those of you that um, have Discovery Channel, no, no doubt um, know those guys. Big um, sort of in the automotive scene and the custom custom cars scene over in the states. Uh, and Dennis has started a Jeep importation business, basically, where he's importing custom jeeps into the UK um, a fantastic setup they started off originally as a sort of posh car dealer um, I mean some of the stuff they have they have really impressive unobtainium stuff there um, I'll just list off a few um, there was a super impressive pro drive spec C unregistered 10 miles on it from 2004 I don't know where they find this stuff there was a um, Aston Martin DB9, uh, just like the one James, or James Bond actually drove a DBS, doesn't he? But um, George drove a DB9 at one point. Um, and that had 346 miles from 2005. I mean, where do you find cars like that? It's incredible, isn't it? There was a uh, Ferrari 308 Quattro Valvole that had uh, 900 miles on it. So they sort of deal in the unobtainium old new cars um, cars that are pretty much as good as new and I can only assume people buy them and put them away and think I'll sit on that one day and sell it on for a profit um, but yeah they're, they're reasonably priced as well they've got a modern classics bit uh, that they're starting up which is my sort of uh, guilty pleasure uh, they're all sort of um, one, two, three, Mercs, uh, all that old stuff. There was some really cool uh, 80s hot hatches, 205 Rally, uh, Golf GTI, the original one with like 900 miles on it, outrageous. Uh, there was a Renault 5 Turbo Gordini, uh, which you just don't see there. A Nova GSI, I mean, when was the last time you saw a Nova GSI? Um, they're, they're all crashed, weren't they, in the 90s? <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's one of those, and again, that was like four thousand miles on it. Absolutely outrageous, and they're not, they don't weren't asking stupid money really. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it was an awesome, awesome place, and it's nice to know that there are still places dealing in this sort of thing. I think it's becoming more and more prevalent, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it is was a fantastic place to visit. I'm going to try and get up there a bit more often, really. Um, nag them a bit to see if they'll uh, let me do a proper feature video on them because I think you guys just need to see the level of um, I was like a kid in a sweet shop the level of sort of car porn that was there it was unbelievable um, in this little sort of industrial estate uh, they just moved to a new premises so they really didn't have any sort of mad signs out or anything and yeah absolutely amazing amazing stuff um, so that was really good um, and I was back to work, so that wasn't so good. But um, I'm, I'm really glad I've got this shock absorber done now. Uh, it does make a massive difference. Uh, as do these upgraded main beam bulbs. I mean, if I could actually see out of my windscreen and have um, had the headlights adjusted properly after I broke it, um, it would be fantastic. And the reason I obviously went up for these updates, is these upgrades even, is that these roads I'm driving here, as you can see, there's no natural, no sort of light at all, uh, very rural, a lot of deer, and I do, well I do it, a thousand, two thousand miles a month on roads like this, 
in the dark. So for me, main beams are a massive priority. Um, I need to be able to see where I'm going. I have been tempted in the past with light bars and light pods, etc. But actually, I found that um, upgraded bulbs in these headlights um, are really, really good. Um, they sort of cut the mustard, as it were. So. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite funny actually. I drive this road the same sort of time every day. I see the same cars. Um, I actually see a subscriber who messaged me the other day saying, oh, I saw you going past uh, the other day. I was like, yeah, they're in a V60 um, D5, I think they were. So if that was you, say hello. Um, there's a dead badger there. That's the, that's the sort of thing you, you want to be looking out for roads like this. And with, the, with the upgrade headlights, it's easier to do so. I mean, it's just, they're not totally foolproof, are they? Their deer just came straight out. You always need uh, like a Wrangler Star style truck with um, big ball bars and everything on. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah the cars the cars running really nicely, and I'm, I'm I'm happy now. I've got this shock absorber done. That fingers crossed, we won't have too many more expensive things for for a while. Um, I know that's tempting fate, but um, it's like it's like saying it's going to be a quiet night when you in your emergency services or something, isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I think I'll probably call it there. Um, you guys don't want to see me drive all the way home. So um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know if you've had any issues with uh, Volvo shock absorbers. I know even the, the 4C suspension stuff is very difficult uh, to deal with, let alone the, the self-leveling ridiculousness of the S80. So um, let us know your thoughts, let us know your experiences, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.